before we get started with the video today guys, I want to let you viewers out there know that only a small fraction of you guys currently watching are actually subscribed to my channel, so make sure to smash that subscribe button for instant updates about videos that I release and other announcements, and also smash that like button to help my channel out. Enjoy the video! Yo, what is up guys? It is Simul here back with another Epic 7 video. And today I'm going to be covering Wyvern 13 one more time, but this time it, instead of going to be a normal team, it is going to be a one-shot team. Now, you guys might be wondering, what is the point of a one-shot team if you don't even lose energy for failing and you can just run it over a longer period of time and get the same rewards? Well, the reason why you want to eventually switch to a one-shot team is because on hunt event days that only lasts for one day, you're not going to be able to use all your leaps and sky stones in that time if your runs are slow. So by having a one-shot team, you'll maximize the efficiency of your um, hunt event days and be able to use all your leaps and sky stones that you want to pour into energy um, for you know farming wyvern. Usually when I ran my non-one-shot team, I would get to about like, I don't know, I would use like 60 leaves at most, I think, in one day. And then that would leave me left over with like a lot of sky stones and some other leaves that I've, you know, got before. And especially if you're buying the Burning Passion packs um, because, you know, you're like a goldfish or whatever, um, you're actually not going to be able to use all your energy. So it's really, really hard without having a one-shot team to actually go through all of your energy supply on your hunt event day, which is what you should be doing, especially when you're like mid and late game. But yeah, one-shot teams are not that accessible for early game and mid-game players. So uh, for late-game players, you're going to want to eventually switch to this. If you're an early-game, mid-game player, um, it's something you want to think about. Um, just plan your units uh, and uh, try to pull for units that might help you in the future. Uh, but you don't want to like actively focus on it immediately because in order to make that one-shot team, you're going to have to have Azimnak on farm, um, even Banshee on farm for destruction set if you want to use that. And just the basic um, general understanding of the game and you know just a good supply of sky stones as well by climbing an arena so you can actually have like a lot of energy to use um, so i'm gonna go over the stats in a bit guys but let's hop into my run actually um, you'll see my run um, is going to be using sinful angie cigarette uh, karin and ssb and i'll show you guys um how my run goes and how it's supposed to go so i'm gonna click auto real quick and you'll see the speed tuning in this run is very very precise you need the speed timings to be very very accurate you see my sinful angie starts off with their s3 attack buffing and speed buffing the team which is also important and then you'll see my ssb will s3 and she'll get three stacks of focus guys and then notice that two of the adds will actually hit me so that means my ssb will counter before my karin can go which is very important because you need karin's defense break on the wyvern and all the adds die so S3 into S2 from SSB will always one shot with attack buff if you have the right um, gear. And then you'll see my Karn actually goes before my Sinjelica, which is very weird because um, my Sinjelica went first, right? But the thing is Sinjelica gives speed buff as well as attack buff, so that boosts my Karn up. So you want to speed tune it so that Karn actually goes before Sinjelica. Because you want her to defense break like this. And then she'll get her S3 off as well because she crits always. And this way, when Sinjelka S1s and she brings Sigurd along, it's against a defense broken boss. And then you'll see my SSB S1s to try to land the target, which it did, and then my Sigurd will S3 in one shot. So that's a clean one shot, guys. Um, so my team actually, without target, can't one shot it completely. My Sigurd S3 will leave the boss with, I think, like 15k HP. Uh, but if target does land, it will always be a clean one shot. So if my target does not land from SSP, it's actually okay because um, Wyvern takes one more turn and this SSP counters again and then um, Karn, Sigurd, or Sinjelica, whoever's alive will just one-shot and finish it off. So pretty clean one-shot team. Obviously, if I want to make a non-reliant on target, um, I would have to boost my Sigurd and Karn's damage, but even with it relying on target, it's fine because if target doesn't land, guys, I still can one-shot the boss. So there's a lot of options for units you can use. Um, the team I'm using is the most standard one. But you could always replace SSB with like Clarissa, um, replace Karn with um, Flan, very good options, uh, very common options. Um, it's just the team I'm using is the most common. Um, there's also a neat new team out with uh, Strays and um, Ram, where people use like Ram and Strays as their, as their one-shotter, and they run like different team comps with it, which I'm not too much of a fan of, especially the Rem one, because the Rem one relies on using Aeros as a dual attacker. Um, but yeah, you, waste, wasting your Aeros for Wyvern one-shot and not being usable everywhere, anywhere else because he has to be built full damage is just not worth it in my opinion. So I just use Sigurd, um, SSB, Karn, and Sinful Angelica. It's one of the most easiest teams to build in my opinion. Um, and it's very consistent and yeah, just easy to use and the units are all, you know, relatively easy to get outside of SSB, but everyone should have it by now if you've been playing since uh, her banner has been out. So 
With that in mind, let's go into my unit stats and I'll tell you how the entire run works and why these stats are very, very important to achieve. So let's go. So starting off guys, I'm actually gonna start off with my Sinful Angelica. Um, so my Sinful Angelica is five stars. You don't really need to get her um, to six stars. You can leave her at five because she doesn't really tank. She just relies on her immortality. And because of that reason guys, you're gonna want to make sure she's at 200% effectiveness or effect resist so she doesn't get stripped of her immortality. And then you want to speed tune her so she's at like 190 speed. Um, you saw in my run that Sinful Angelica went first on the first wave, and then on the second wave on the boss, she actually went second. So you want to speed tune it at around like 190-ish. It really depends on how fast your Karin is. My Karin's a bit slower, so I made my Sinful Angelica a little bit slower. And then you want to make sure she is on the imprint for um, attack. And then usually the receivers of this imprint are going to be SSB and Cigarette. So if you saw my placement of my Wyvern team, you would have noticed that my Cigarette and SSB were both getting um, the attack buff, as well as the crit buff from Karn, which I'll show in a second. And then you also want to run her on this artifact, which will increase attack of all your allies, which is very, very important because it makes the gear requirements a lot lower. Not a lot lower, but decently lower. And the effectiveness, which is really, really nice for Cigarette Bleed, for SSB target, um, and even Sangelica's own um, S1... Uh, What's it called? Uh, defense, not defense down, attack down, which uh, also counts as a debuff for Sigurd's damage. So make sure you run at 200% effectiveness, or effect resist, guys, and about like 190-ish speed and on the super duper water gun shooter, super soaker <laughs> artifact. And then for my DPS units, I'm going to start with Karn, guys. So Karn, very important to the team because she has a crit chance, um, what's it called, imprint. So she's giving my SS or my Sigurd and my SSB a crit chance imprint. Um, very, very nice to have because it'll lower the gear requirements. And also, um, you're going to want to make her about like 160-ish speed or a bit slower if your Sinful Angelica is a bit slower. And the reason is because, yeah, you want to speed tune it so your Karin never goes during the first wave. Um, you want her to be able to go after the two small adds go in the first wave so that SSB counters with her three focus stacks from S3 and then the two adds attacking. And then, yeah, the adds will die before carrying it's a turn so that way she saves her skills. Um, you're also going to want to run her on 65% effectiveness because she is your defense breaker. If your defense break doesn't land, you're going to fail the run most likely, um, actually like 100% of the time. So yeah, um, the bad part about this is you have a 15% chance where you won't you know, be able to clear the stage, but it fails really quickly as well, so it's not that bad. Some runs which you, where you fail in normal teams, the fail takes like so long, so it wastes so much time. But in one-shot teams, um, the fail is really fast, especially in Wyvern because Wyvern hits three times, so you don't have to worry about it taking too long. And then you'll see her S3. I mold all the way. It's going to be her um, main damage skill. And the reason why I mold it all the way is because it really helps out with Sigurd's damage. Um, by gearing your Karin really well damage-wise, you actually will lessen the gear requirements of your Sigurd for one-shotting. So that's why my Karin is um, on some decent stats. I have about 4k attack, 250 crit damage, and then obviously 85% crit. So she gets that 100 against the Wyvern. And 30 um, DDJ, which is very important for also dealing damage. Some people run her on like, uh, like Warhorn or something or... Um, Maybe she's like on super, the water gun thing, and then Sinjelka's on uh, Warhorn. But uh, I like the DTJ, so she does a little bit more damage, and I think it's more damage overall for my team. Um, so yeah, very important to get to about like 155-ish, 160-ish speed, and then 65% effectiveness, and then everything else goes into damage. And then next we have the arguably hardest unit to build for the one shot. It's going to be your SSB, or your Clarissa if you use it. So right off the bat, you'll notice she's not at 85% crit, but because of Karn's imprint, um, which gives... Let me look again, 12.9 at SS. I am actually above the threshold for the crit. Um, so yeah, you're gonna want her at about 100% um, crit, obviously with all the um, artifacts, imprints, and the 15% bonus against Wyvern. And you're also going to want her about like 180 speed so that she goes right after Sinjelica, but there's no RNG. You wanna keep in mind, you don't want her to be 5% slower to than um, Sinjelica. You want her to be a little bit more than 5% slower. So I made her about like almost 20 speed slower to be safe. Um, and then, that way, she can get her S3 off um, right after Sinjelica, no matter what. And then she'll get her counter off too um, after the small adds so that she one-shots the wave. And then the damage stats is the hardest part, guys. You're going to want her about like 320% crit damage um, and like 4.1k attack without any artifacts. But since I have the water gun soaker or whatever, um, it actually makes it a lot easier. And I also have Sinjelica with the attack imprint on uh, Seaside Bologna, so she actually does more damage than is listed here. Um, but yeah, her gear requirements are crazy, guys. Like, you're gonna need some, like, insane gear for the one-shot. I think Clarissa is very similar in how um, your gear quality needs to be high to one-shot. 
But the thing is, I think she needs to be geared a little bit differently than SSP. I don't know the exact numbers because I don't use um, Clarissa, but yeah, I'm sure if other people um, uh, other people use her a lot, so you guys can check that out. But yeah, you'll even see like her gear is not even that great SSPs, but you can still like get to this threshold I mean, as long as you have some decent pieces. Like my helmet and my weapon are pretty decent for this. Um, I could even gem out the health here for more attack if I wanted to, right? Uh, but yeah, you want to make sure she's on a drink. 30 drinks and there's no RNG. If you don't have drink there, guys, you can actually use um, this otherworldly machinery. So this is from the side story, the Yuna side story that you can buy. And you get a max limit break for free. This one's a little bit worse than drink, I think. But um, you can still use this. You just need a little bit better gear. Just slightly better gear so it's not too big of a deal. And yeah, for stat-wise, that's what you really want. Um, defense and health don't matter. Effectiveness is nice to have for the target chance, um, but you don't have to focus on it. You really want the damage first. Um, after that, you can start focusing on effectiveness. You'll see I'm at 44%. I want to gem out something like my shoes here. For the effect resist for effectiveness, right? Even the health here on my um, my sword, I can gem out for um, effectiveness. And that'll eventually push me to 65%. Or I can even get some more imprints. And then she'll be able to have the max chance to target, which will help my one-shot um, be a little bit more faster. And then next we have the one-shotter herself, Sigrid. So Sigrid needs to be on um, DDJ and she needs to be on the S1 equipment that will increase the damage of her S1 because you want her to do more damage when Sinful Angelica S1s and brings her along. Um, and then I have it on Rage Set guys because it makes the gear requirements a bit lower. But in general you want to aim for about like 5k attack. Um, not 5k, you want to go for like 4.6, 4.5k attack, and then about like 325% crit damage. You'll see my attack's a little bit higher, and my crit damage is a little bit lower, so it works out. Um, but obviously, if you want to completely one-shot with Rage Set, you're going to want um, 5k attack and then like 320-some percentage um, crit damage. Um, it really also depends on your Karin's gear, guys. Just try to get your Seeker as strong as possible. All you need is attack, crit chance, crit damage. That's all you need to worry about. Effectiveness is like a nice bonus, but you don't really need to focus on it because... Um, you don't really care too much about the bleed. Getting the bleed is nice when Sinful Angelica brings her, but yeah, you're mostly just primarily there for the S3 damage. Um, you'll see like my my rage set gear is like okay. Um, the thing is like it's still not enough to one shot it. I think my chest piece is pretty trash. Um, I gem this out for effectiveness just so um, I get the higher bleed chance, but I need to replace that. Um, my neck is pretty decent. Um, obviously, I'm missing a lot of like crit chance subs on some pieces, so I could swap out. Um, some more crit chance for more damage and on other pieces, but yeah, like I'm using some free gear here in the boots. Like this piece is pretty trash too, right? Um, but yeah, the gear requirements aren't like super crazy, but they are decently high, so you need to keep that in mind. I'm um, even on a broken set here, so I'm losing out on some stats. Uh, but for speed tuning, you don't care. You just you just want her to do damage. That's it. Um, that's all you need to worry about. Secret seems hard to gear for this, but honestly, she's not as hard to gear as like SSB because you need to like speed tune it and then have all this damage, right? And the effect is really nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for stats, guys, for my team. Um, if you're running other units, obviously you need different stats, but Clarissa's stats will be pretty similar to SSB's, and Flan's stats are a lot lower than um, Karin's. I think Flan might be easier to gear if you run her instead of Karin because uh, you don't have to worry about her damage, right? She's just there to buff. Um, Karin just makes another uh, DPS you have to you know, gear, but she does make the run more easy, I guess, if you do have the gear for her because uh, she can help with the damage. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my Wyvern 13 um, one-shot guide. Um, you just really need to aim for certain stat benchmarks on certain units, and you'll be fine. Um, obviously, there's a lot of give and take with the stats. Um, you can like lose some attack for some crit damage, especially on like SSB and Sigrid. But uh, there's some key ones you need to hit, like the speed tuning is very important, the effect resist is really important, and uh, obviously crit chance on everyone is very important. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for my Wyvern one-shot guide. Um, I hope you guys can get there too. And if you're not already one-shotting Wyvern, don't worry about it too much. Um, this is something that people will do or try to aim for late game when they're trying to be like super min max efficient on hunt event days. Uh, but early game, if you don't have your other PVE done or mid game as well, just try to focus on that first and then get into Wyvern one shotting once you have everything um, under control in your other areas of PVE. Um, yeah, like my Wyvern one shot team, I just got done like a couple months ago. I never really focused on it too much because I kind of thought the same thing, right? Like, uh, why one shot when I just, you know, spend another minute on the run and cleared anyways, but. I'm getting to the point where in hunt events I really need to use all my sky stones and leafs, so I really need to start one-shotting wyvern so I can get more gear on my units, especially because a lot of new units are coming out this episode. So yeah, that's why I made my one-shot team, guys. Um, once you get to that point, you should start making one too. But until then, it's fine. Just keep your regular wyvern team. It'll do for now. You can even make it really fast, like a two-turn wyvern team with like G purge and Sigrid and Alexa. That's what I did before. 
But yeah, I really hope you guys liked this video and this helped, especially to you guys looking to one-shot Wyvern. And as always, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.